equity accounting is really messy in Warwick right now. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. And uh, accounting is kind of a friendly term. Uh, there's a big problem in the city of Warwick right now with the firefighters sick pay scheme. Uh, the condition of how they've been paid for the last five years at least it seems. And uh, there's going to have to be some serious remedies, if not heads rolling, if not people walking away in handcuffs, because uh, this isn't good. And I have two guests here this evening to kind of set the stage, explain what their efforts have brought to bear here and what may be coming down the pike. Here's the big worry. We'll talk about this later on in the program. It may not just be in the city of Warwick. This may be a condition of cultural behavior uh, with our taxpayer money that is ongoing and pretty consistent across the state. We'll see how that all turns out. Welcome in on this Thursday evening. Now, program note, as you know, if you watch the show on any regular basis, and if you don't, you just joined us for the first time, welcome in, thanks. Um, we taped the show on Tuesday of this week. There's a chance that there's been some developments on this, on this story because uh, there are people who are you know, on the hot seat, uh, and it could very well be that by the time you've seen this, there have been a couple of other incremental developments. We'll catch up to that next week. But I think telling the story and explaining how this all came down takes some time, so we're going to get right into it this evening. Uh, here's a headline that uh, begins to tell the story. You may have noticed it. Warwick Fire Department conducts inspection of critics. But no, no, that's, that's not the, that is not the one that we're looking for. We'll, uh, we'll come back to that. Give me another one, Eric, because we'll come back to that. Uh, Yes, there we go. Work firefighter uh, pay or sick pay under scrutiny. All right, we've got our act together. Ken Block, who is an often visitor to the program, two-time gubernatorial candidate, uh, originator of the moderate party, and now uh, chairman of Watchdog RI. That's that guy. And this guy, Rob Cody, is uh, a citizen of work, uh, who is, I, I think, the kind of guy that if you, had, if you had one in every city, things might be a little bit better. I don't even. Have, I refer to you as a citizen of work who pays attention to the issues and who has actually done all the, the the early homework on this. Correct? Yeah, I'm just a businessman raising two beautiful little girls and paying my taxes and want things to be fair and equitable for everybody, especially the elderly in our community that, unfortunately, we're getting taxed out. Yeah, but it's like a dog seeing blood. Is he? Oh, not? yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't like to be lied to. Oh, and you think there's been plenty of lies here? Oh. All right. Why don't we do this? Um, I, I want you to be able to talk about the play-by-play -play of this story, but if I had to ask you, Ken, what is the executive summary of sure. this story? Uh, give me the 60-second or less executive summary. Rob discovered that although the Warwick Firefighter contract states that the firefighters can receive 75% of unused sick time on an annual basis, uh, they're given 20 sick days a year, whatever they don't use, they can convert it to cash. Rob discovered that there were firefighters receiving far in excess of 75% of the sick days. In fact, he noticed that there were firefighters who took a bunch of sick days who were given the full sick day payout of uh, 15 days a year. That fact drove a whole bunch of uh, digging on both of our parts. And what we discovered ultimately was that we could prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that the city of Warwick was not operating per what the contract said they should be doing. Uh, and that sort of simmered for quite some time. And then, then this past week, there's been an explosion of news thanks to pressure that Rob's kept on, thanks to you know opinion pieces and other things that I've done. And now we get admissions that they had secret side deals, that uh, Mayor Avedesian's solicitor was signing agreements behind Mayor Avedesian's back. Uh, and what we know now, as of right now, is that it looks like there was a secret side deal in Warwick that allowed firefighters to receive monies that they were not contractually enabled to get and that that agreement is probably not valid. All right, very good. That wasn't 60 seconds, but that was required. Um, let's step back even further. You've been watching city finance for a long time. 
you are the, a thorn in the side of public officials who aren't comfortable with diligence. Yes, I mean, you, you, absolutely. Th this is this they is have a one of a responsibility. One of a series of things that you've brought up over time that you find problematic. Some people think you're half nuts because you will take time to literally videotape and surveil the firefighters or the DPW workers rolling around town. Uh, you've posted videos. You, you, you're all about government efficiency, and uh, clearly, you're not being invited and never have been to to any of the public employee unions birthday parties uh, over and the course of okay. time and that's okay but this is something that you're inclined to do but go go give me 10 seconds on on why this why are you as active as you are because everyone in Rhode Island wants to know what's your bada bing like what's your real motive I was invited to do this by Scott Abadesian when at a city council meeting at to do a what hearing, to do what to surveil everybody, surveil. and here's why. At a council meeting during the budget hearings, when I asked the question about waste and abuse, Mayor Abadesian looked at me and said, this city is being run as lean and efficiently as possible. And the next morning, I videotaped DPW workers leaving the city, going to Goddard Park, hanging out, driving around for eight hours, and not doing anything. That's not lean and efficient. Since then, we had and, and that was a couple, three years ago, at least. Yeah. yeah. Since then, we, we, had, we had people from the DPW being arrested for thievery. We had a person from, who was the maintenance director of the school department with $100,000 worth of stolen goods in his house, but no one caught this. So our accounting practices and principles are so sloppy that you're missing $100,000 of merchandise and no one knows it. Okay, so so you've been at this for a while and you've been scrutinizing the, the you, you you like to scrutinize the contracts. Uh, you think it's important that... Well, I think it's every resident's, uh, it's, it's important to do so. You need to have the knowledge of what you're paying for, right? That's what we're paying so for. So you got into this, Ken just gave us a good executive summary of what you found. Why did you find it? What, what caused you to look into the sick pay accounting process for firefighters? Well, the ability to do simple arithmetic, I think, is a quality. And when you go to a budget hearing and you're looking at budget documents and you see two line items that don't line up and they don't reconcile. What were they? The unused sick, I'm sorry, the, uh, the sick leave pay, which was $11,000. And over, the what overtime, period, over what period of time? One fiscal year. Okay. This is with the fire department. Uh, Thirty-five, one hundred is the line item. And the overtime to cover the eleven thousand dollars of sick time was two point eight million dollars. <laughs> Somehow, <laughs> I tried all kinds of math. It just didn't reconcile. The, the, that does that. You get, you get, you laugh or you'll cry. Yeah. So and the answers. <laughs> so an eleven thousand. <laughs> so you're so good at this. So an eleven thousand dollar line item for sick pay uh, was out of balance by two point seven nine something like eight, that. Eight, eight million. So dollars. further questioning, when so when I ask a question and I get a ridiculous answer, I naturally have abundance of questions poised, ready to see blood, as you say. So the next question to the mayor was. How do you reconcile this? And the answer was from the mayor and the fire chief that... This is the former mayor, Scott Abadesian. And the former fire chief that that line item only encompasses the non-uniform fire personnel, the secretaries. So I asked them to point to the line item that indicated the sick leave time accounted for by uniform firefighters, and neither one could answer the question. They looked back and forth. The finance director, Ernie Zalimski, couldn't answer the question. And finally, the mayor said, Oh, we just roll those numbers into our salary line item. Well, that's a fundamental flaw in basic accounting principles. You cannot do that. So that sent me down the line to do public records access, um, looking for sick records, looking for sick time, accountability sheets. And when I finally had a couple of documents, namely accountability sheets and the unused sick pay report, I could go down and I could see that one man was paid for perfect attendance, but going through the accountability sheets, he took seven days of sick time. It didn't add up. So upon further uh, requests for public access, uh, public records access, Mr. Peter Ruggiero, the city solicitor, just blockaded me from getting records. And that blockade has been going on for two and a half years. And during that time, the basic records that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt that there was a problem 
were taken to five city council members, including the council president, Joe Solomon, two and a half years ago. Now the acting mayor. Now the acting mayor. Showed them the math that this does not work, that you have a problem. Fast forward two and a half years, and we're addressing it now after several hundred thousands of dollars has been absconded. All right, the, the perfectly well explained. Uh, when we come back, you're going to see some of the fancy accounting that's at the root of this, and then we're going to talk about some of the specific problems. Stay with us. All right, so uh, what you're looking at there, it, without any names, is, is the 2018, 2018 modern version of accounting for the sick days in the Warwick Fire Department, correct? That's correct. The ledgers that are filled out, I mean, you'd think this is 1928 in terms of uh, what's being used there. There's no names there. That is actually a real ledger, by the way. Uh, we've locked the name out because we're not here to prosecute uh, because we're not law enforcement. The individual uh, firefighters, uh, many of whom probably are overcompensated by hundreds if not thousands of dollars each, correct? Absolutely. Yes, with the sick day policy. But the very idea, Rob, that the, uh, and by the way, if you just tuned in, you, you, you got to watch the beginning of the show on foxprovidence.com to get the, ba the basics on this because we're just kind of running through this Warwick sick pay scheme problem which is now white light in the city of Warwick. These are the guys unearthed the problem. Rob, you, you, you've, you, went, you did, went digging. You were probably aghast over the idea that your records request came up with nothing but handwritten, erasure-filled well, actually, pieces actually, of paper. Well, actually, this was a present because what I had asked for was the three-page unused sick page report, unused sick pay report, which is distributed every February. They refused to give it to me, and they finally, in an effort to get rid of me, said, come on and sit with us, we've got something for you. And they handed me three gigantic three-ring binders, and when I opened it, it was Christmas. I said, you've got to be kidding me, Chief. You do your accounting with pencil and paper, with hundreds of eraser marks? T tell me you can give me something better than that that's not 1918. The City of Warwick has more than 200 firefighters. 200 pieces of paper like that. Pencil on paper, erasures like crazy. It's uh, going to make your Mr. IT dude, Mr. Fraud that? Investigator. Let's go on stuff I like mean, this. So, literally, you, you must start you must start to twitch over this whole thing. It's terrible. I mean, it's so backwards. And you, and this is not small potatoes numbers here. This is uh, in aggregate. You're talking about millions of dollars that are paid out in total uh, for these for the unused sick time, and. It's being accounted for in, in a way that no modern accountant would, would say right. you can do. So here's how this thing actually became uh, kind of public. Well, it's been, this is not your first visit here. You, you, we've done this show a couple of times, but the mm -hmm. way it kind of kind of went to here this week is when the rest of the media, the Providence Journal and others, started to get involved, and they got involved because the firefighter union is now grieving the sick pay that they've been getting having been suspended by now acting Mayor Solomon who based on the pressure that you've put on and the scrutiny you've brought to the table went hold on a second we need to stop this and I guess that happened in July July 18th they stopped accruing that additional residual point four. I can't figure about. out of the firefighter union is is smarter than all of us or dumb as a post. I can't figure out why they would have grieved this and not just kind of said, you know what, maybe we ought to go back to what we're doing in the contract. Do you have any instinct on this? Well, the grievance was one thing. What really blew this open was the admission this past Wednesday that they had a secret side deal. Well, that came, though, right. from the grievance. Yeah. Right? So the grievance comes and you say, well, what is the basis of the grievance? The grievance, well, we have an agreement with the city. Uh, can we put this up, this, uh, this work fire letter? Now, no, 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 that's the headline. I'm looking for, I'm looking for the fire letter, if you can, uh, Eric. The, the last, the la there we go, thank you. Um, the Warwick Firefighters Local number 2748, uh, written in 2013 to Chief Armstrong by William Lloyd, then president. Payment for unused sick leave after maximum accumulation. Uh, 
I won't read all of the details to you here, but this is a one paragraph side amendment that was never presented to the city council for ratification, which adjusts with the way the contract called for paying sick days, correct? Correct. And when you go online... Then what the hell is it doing? Excuse my French. What is it doing under the headline of the Warwick Firefighter Union? Under what mm -hmm. circumstance does the union... I mean, anyone who looks at this goes, wait a second. If there's some directive on compensation from taxpayer dollars to be made, it needs to be made under the letterhead of the city of Warwick. But Dan, one of the things that's really important here, that's dated April 23rd, 2013. They have not changed any of the language in Article 6, which is relative to payment of sick time. So, in what, what, what Rob means by that? Two contracts have been negotiated and ratified since that was published. And no Neither changes. one of those contracts includes that language in it. So, so that is null and void. It's illegal. The city solicitor does not have the authority to change contracts that are not ratified well, by the council. Well, important to both of you making the point, if it was good faith that this was just a quick and dirty way to amend a current contract, you would put the current conditions that you amended into the full new contract. Correct. But they've been exempted from the full contract. Correct. Correct. So this side deal has been operating in, in perpetuity or for five years, which again is just for general conversation, overcompensating the firefighters on Without sick a doubt. days. Um, but so, Dan, more importantly, please, the mayor didn't know about this? The chief executive of the city that has a $318 million budget he didn't know about this? He says he didn't. His all finance you, director got, didn't know about this? Well, they say they didn't. His chief of staff didn't know about this? They say they didn't. His payroll director didn't know about this? <laughs> they say they didn't. I think... Your they, Honor, I rest my case! <laughs> You're getting good at this. You can sell that to someone that's not paying attention. However, the city solicitor clearly did because why? He signed it. Gotcha. So the city solicitor, Mr. Ruggieri, who, by the way, is welcome to come here and explain all of this because I'm wide-eyed and bushy-tailed to, to hopefully find that there's just a misunderstanding here. Uh, he executed this agreement, correct? Yes, he did. Um, and Mayor Abdesian says he knows nothing about it. Acting Mayor Solomon obviously got a look at this and stopped things in July. Was it this that stopped it, or was it just all the noise? No, it was the noise. But what's important to you is... You How did this come out? The, un the, the union president went on multiple media sources and said, if anything, it's an accounting error. It's not an accounting error, because that document specifically lays out exactly what they're doing in the accounting error in the accounting and on these documents. So the fallacy that it's an accounting error is, is ridiculous because they're doing exactly what that document says that they should do. All right. So is this a one-off problem or a cultural problem, not only in Warwick but in other places? We'll ask that question when we come back. And I figure we just throw this one in on, on top of it with Mr. Block and Mr. Cody. We'll have a few minutes here, but this can't go undiscussed quickly. The Warwick Fire Department conducts inspection of critics' business. So you, in the middle of this whole conversation, got a visit from the fire inspector at your business. Surprise inspection. Based the, on an the anonymous... Day of... So <laughs> after it became public that there was a secret side deal... I decided that I'd like to know about all the secret side deals that the city of Warwick has made with any of its labor unions for the last decade. You made a public records request. I made a request. public records request for that. Hours after they did that, there was a knock on my door. It was the fire inspector telling me that he had an anonymous complaint about something to do with lighting. He wasn't sure what, and could he come in and inspect my office? So I said, sure, and I had him come in, and we walked through, and he did not find anything, and he left. And then I started right out and I got a hold of different media people including you and I said you'll never guess what just happened and my take on it is was a thuggish ridiculous pathetic and amateurish attempt at intimidating me which is not going to work and it didn't it's going to backfire I'm investigating my legal remedies for that intimidation and if we can, if I can take any kind of legal action to go after them for doing this I will all right, so that's a little sidebar for you here. Um, 
one more thing before I let Rob finish, because he's, he's on a roll and his timing is impeccable this evening. We may find that this is not just work, or there might be more in work. Um, uh, Vince Regasta, who is a pretty well-known, uh, and make a note, Anito, somebody we want to have in here. He was on with Matt Allen. He's a well-known labor attorney. has argued both sides of many contracts. He was on with Matt Allen and WPRO earlier this week, saying, hey, listen, this is kind of a, this is, I, you know, this is not unusual which is worrisome, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what he had to say, that these side agreements, which may look formal, but have no legal weight, Correct. Uh, may exist all over the place. In they fact, do. last night, on Thursday night, two, week, two nights ago, uh, well, this is Thursday, you're watching this, on Monday night in East Greenwich, it may have happened as well. Well, it did happen. The, the, the East Greenwich town manager presented to the East Greenwich town council 11 secret side deals that were executed by the previous administration and the firefighters union, 11. So that's outrageous. It's happening in more side than one deal, place. deal meaning they weren't ratified by the governing body that needed to ratify it. Correct, and therefore invalid in the eyes of the law. It's amazing. What is the, we only have a minute and a half or so. Rob, what is the, where do you think this is going? Where do you hope this to go? Well, it needs to end and we need to find out The practice has been suspended. Right. So and we need restitution. This is hundreds of thousands of dollars, and, and we don't know how much. And the reason we don't know how much is because the city solicitor, Peter Ruggiero, whose fingerprints are all over this, is blockading us from getting the rest of the documents. There's an, there's an audit that, by the way, on a radio interview with Mayor Solomon six weeks, eight weeks ago, uh, he denied knowing about the audit. The audit has is, is been ongoing for... Well, he signed for the audit because he was the council <laughs> president, so yeah, I don't know how he doesn't know about he didn't, it. Couldn't, couldn't, what audit? Okay. Um, the audit's going to come out to the council, correct? Correct. At what juncture? Well, I would be remiss if I didn't say it's probably not going to come out before the election. Maybe after the election. We don't know what, but the, what point. The audit may confirm more problems, but there's no doubt that you've got, you've got the evidence that there's already a single problem. Are you expecting that firefighters are going to have to repay monies that have been paid to them? I'm expecting that the city administration should demand that they be repaid, and they should, they should get Scott Abadesian and his executive committee behind closed doors, under oath, and investigate this from a prosecutorial point of view to see if, in fact, a crime was committed. There's no way that this could proliferate without members of the executive branch of government knowing about it and knowingly and willfully covering it up. The documents clearly substantiate that that was done. No word from the Attorney General on this. He's <laughs> in Florida. Well, who knows where he is, but uh, no word from the State Attorney General on this. Don't worry, Virginia. Christmas is coming, and a new AG will be elected in November. Uh, guys, thank you for your, your efforts on Thanks, this. Man. Quite the story. Uh, final word, and we come back. Stay with us.